Calvary. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray, God, your whole spirit. Everybody say whole. whole. Your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved. Blameless. Unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 13. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Everybody say holiness. 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 You'll notice in your notes the first scriptures we covered those last week. And I would like to just read through them again. Uh, if you're like me, I have to hear things more than once to remember it. If it's a name, I have to hear it about 30 times. Uh, if it's a number, I might have to hear it five times or ten times. Yeah, if it's a place where fried chicken's at, I don't have to hear about good fried chicken. I don't have to hear it once. So our brain remembers things different ways. Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people. Say that with me. And my people, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people, say it with me, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass, what's it say? After, after what? After the Lord has brought restoration. After the Lord has dealt wondrously. After the Lord has removed the shame. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens. In those days will I pour out my Spirit. Amen. If we ever lived in a day where people need the Spirit of the Lord poured out on them, it is, it is today. And uh, we live in a world full of brokenness. There's so much abuse, verbal abuse, uh, sexual abuse, uh, emotional abuse. There is so much absolute abuse uh, unkindness and rudeness and uh, people just don't seem to be able to consider someone else's feelings because they're wrapped up in their own offense and feelings. I'm sure you've heard it said and maybe even seen it to be true. Hurt people hurt people. And it's good for us as believers in dealing with people that are that act like jerks or act like mean people or are having a bad day, uh, it, it does us good to recognize uh, that you're not their problem. They are their problem. But the Lord would want to heal them. He wants to heal people. He wants to restore people. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24, who his self, his own self, Jesus, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Amen. A lot of people, they live below their uh, opportunity. They do not receive the fullness of what God has for them. Uh, I, I know that I have not been wounded as deeply as others have been. But I would say to you, everyone has their own personal pain and they have their own personal uh, uh, disappointments. 
And if you're the one with it, it seems mighty real. It may not be like somebody else, but to you, it's it's real. And uh, I, I I know that I myself, there have been times when I've had personal anguish and pain, and I have been broken hearted and and disappointed and disillusioned. And it was very real to me. I have went through seasons of discouragement. Looking back, I probably have even seen times when I have went through seasons of what some would might call depression. But the Lord has sustained me as He has sustained you. And ultimately, healing comes from Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen? Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who... I uh, walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. But but we know that there is condemnation if you don't walk after the Spirit. You've heard it said, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. It's not true. It's not true. Uh... Amen. Anybody ever said something to you you can remember and, and, and if you think about it very long it still stings? Yes. My children probably feel a little pain from some things I've said about them. <laughs> <laughs> and it all happened on Sunday morning before church. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not funny. It's funny now. It wasn't funny then. Uh, for many years, my wife went to church early to do music. Uh, she left church, left the house about seven, something like that, and uh, she would have their clothes set out. But it was my job to help make sure they got their clothes on. And uh, <clears throat> oh Jesus, I, I'm feeling pain and anguish right now. <laughs> it's a miracle that that I have had any grace in my preaching through that traumatic time and I think it's probably true for my sons I probably traumatized them as well but we, we survived didn't we boys we survived I have so many wonderful memories about Sunday mornings one of our rituals is every Sunday morning we would go to, to Shipley's Donuts and uh, we would uh, we would uh, turn on the radio and Brother Dylan would probably usually preaching on the radio we'd listen to him for about 35 45 seconds and you hear him wound up like he is. And I would pull up through the window and we'd order our donut holes and chocolate milk. And, and uh, you know, it's a little, maybe five minute drive, the lights are right, to the little place where we were having church. And, and they would get their, 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 their father's uh, sermon to their sons every Sunday morning. I, I just really treasured that. I'm not sure if they treasured it, but, but I did. And, uh, but, but I survived. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. They survived is probably more apt. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3, it speaks of Jesus. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. I didn't set my clock. We're in dangerous ground. Surely he hath borne our sorrow, our griefs, and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. You know, this all seems, uh, uh, it, it seems to be abstract to us sometimes. We, we, we see Jesus hanging on the cross. We see uh, the crown of thorns on his head, and we wince at the idea of the pain and the shame. But when we, if we could just, the Lord could give us a revelation of of what that purchased for us, to perceive that 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 His blood and His pain equals my peace. His blood, His stripes equals my healing. His blood and his bruises equals my, come on somebody, my peace. Uh, all of the things that he paid for, there was something purchased with every suffering. 
There was something gained in me in his troubles and his trials. It was purchased that you and I could have victory and we could be overcomers. Amen. And so I think it's important for us is that Jesus paid the price for our wholeness. He, he, he paid the price for our healing, our inner healing, our inner peace. And we live in a world that the world is so bound up. They're so troubled. They're so imprisoned in their minds, imprisoned in their, their, their addictions. They are imprisoned in, in, in pain, things that have never happened to them. People have literal pain from it. And there, 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 are, there are generations of people that have mental anguish because of something that happened to them, their family, hundreds of years ago. They walk around with a grudge. They walk around with, with, with hatred because of some real or perceived wrong. Amen? You know, that's what, what happened with the Jews and the Samaritans. They hated each other. And it wasn't even about them. It was about uh, generations before the Samaritans sl uh, sold the Jews into slavery. And so hundreds of years later, the Jews still hated the Samaritans. And they saw themselves as superior. They saw themselves as the holy and the Samaritans were untouchable. And it all went back to a generational curse of bitterness and hatred toward a people. But Jesus, what did Jesus say, Brother Ryan? He said it Sunday, i got to go through Samaria. Jesus loved the ones that nobody else loved. Because He came and He shed His blood for everyone. And so the Scripture, with that in mind, when we read the Scripture that says Isaiah 61, the Bible tells us, in I think the book of Luke, Jesus stood up and He started reading there in the hearing of those that were there in the synagogue, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach. What's it say? Good tidings. Good, good news. He came to he, he has anointed me to preach good news unto the meek. He hath sent me to what? To bind up the brokenhearted, to Proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To point unto them that mourn. Everybody say weep. We grieve. Sadness in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for, for mourning. The garment of praise for the Spirit of heaviness that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that, that Jesus, that the Lord God may be glorified, that and they shall build up, they shall build the what? The waste. The old they shall raise up the, the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, the and the desolations of many generations. You see how that applies to the idea of God healing us? On the inside, the oil of joy. There's so much sadness. There's so much loss. There's so much turmoil. There's so much confusion. And one of the great things about the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel that we preach, the gospel we experience, is He wants everyone to know we don't have to be bound up in the chains of shame. We don't have to be bound up in the chains of the past. We don't have to be bound up in the pain of the abuse. We don't have to be bound up in, the, in, in, in all of the luggage and the baggage of the troubles of yesterday. The Lord can help us to have peace, perfect peace, with things that would seem to be perfect, uh, amazing, terrible things that have happened. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul writes, Brethren, I count not myself to, to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press. Ever said press. press? I press toward. I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark for the prize. Somebody say, praise God. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Can I tell you, restoration precedes manifestation. Healing precedes the best blessing. 
Broken vessels got to be repaired because broken vessels have no ability to retain or really receive what God has planned for them. You have the best cup. If there's a hole at the bottom of it, you can pour the most expensive liquid in it. It's going to all leak out. And truth of the matter is, we have ministered to people. You have ministered to people. There have been people that have come to this church and they have felt the presence of the Lord poured out on them. They, they have been baptized. They have repented. But because they, they, they failed to recognize their need to enroll in the process of restoration, they never were able to retain the blessing of the Lord. And so they come in and they go out. And, and, and in the end, they're almost worse off because they came in. The Bible says it would be better for some if they never, if they never heard the word. They never tasted of the, of the gift. Because, because there's something that happens. And we, we have to recognize that, that that's, that's something I, I don't know how to do. It. I, I, wish, I wish somebody would show me how to help people that are broken to realize the only way I'm going get, to get saved, I'm going to get healed, and I'm going to experience the wholeness and fullness God has for me is I'm going to have to put myself in the, on the wheel of the potter and I'm going to have to stay on the wheel of the potter. And that's not done in a, in a service of an hour. That's not done in a, in a week. That, that's not done in a month. But I'm telling you that as long as we are here, we've got to stay on the potter's wheel. We've got to be moldable. We've got to be bendable. We've, we've got to be uh, healable. We've got to allow Jesus to put His pressure on us and to work out the hardness, to bind up the brokenness. Amen. Amen. It's not done in the service. It's not done in the service. You know that. I know that. But oh, that we can help people see that living for God and experience the joy and peace that He has is it's every day. It's all day. It's seven days a week. Right. It's 30 days a month. It's 365 days a year. I am enrolled in the process of purification and sanctification and glorification. God has something greater for me, but I have got to stay on the wheel. Amen. Amen. The Living Bible of Philippians 3 says, No, dear brothers, I am still not all that I should be, but I am bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God is calling us up to heaven because of what Christ Jesus did for us. Forgetting. Somebody say forgetting. The Greek there is to lose out of mind, to neglect, to remember, to forget. I love this. What does it mean to forget? To no longer care. Mm -hmm. Just got to let it go. Amen. I, I've, I've heard people help people pray for, for, for hurts and wounds. and I, I've heard them say, just imagine it's... A, it's in your hand and it's connected to a hot air balloon. And, and you're holding on to it. Just pray, Lord, I forgive them. Let it go. Let it go. I don't, I don't know that there's any easy solution. I do know that we must commit ourselves. We must commit ourselves to forgive. And it may, it may take a few times. You ever had a dirty garment you put it in the washer and it don't come out the first time? You might scrub it a little bit you put it out and it don't come out the second time. You say, I know what this needs. This needs some shout. You go get some of that special cleaning fluid, Brother Alex, and you put some shout on it. And then you put it in there. The Bible says that He has given us beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. He's given us the garment of of praise for the Spirit. Sometimes you got to do a little more. Sometimes stuff gets down deep inside of us and we got to pray about it for a little while. Amen. I personally have been offended and had my feelings hurt and, got, and felt wrong and it took me months. I know that's never happened to y'all. Just being transparent. Finally one day, I realized, Jesus, you're going to have to put me in the double tumble drive. Amen. Double hot water. Jesus, i got to get this off of me. Amen? Amen? Because at the end of the day, forgiveness is not about them. They can go to hell. No, no. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. That they may very well go to hell. <laughs> they may 
very well. Guys, write that down. Don't say that when you're preaching. They may very well go to hell, but it's not going to be because I'm holding anything against them. Okay, you laugh. It's funny. <laughs> forgiveness isn't about them, but forgiveness is about me. That's right. Right? I don't want anybody. What was it that Jesus said? Uh, I think it might have been Stephen. Somebody was dying at the hands of somebody that said, Lord, hold this not to their charge. I heard someone say, uh, in the process of forgiveness, they prayed to the Lord, if we get to judgment day and you need a witness, I refuse to witness against them. Everybody say forgiveness. forgiveness. And at the end of the day, forgiveness to others is proof we have received the grace of God. If we want to keep growing in grace, we've got to give grace. In fact, anything you want to grow in, you've got to be willing to give it. Amen. I'm going to stop because I think I'm, I'm feeling good enough. I think I've went too long. Amen. My, my final point tonight is, is, is we can be unloved by God. It is possible not to be loved by God. That's, that's provocative, I know. Romans chapter 8. Who shall separate us? Everybody say who. Who. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay. Everybody say nay. 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 In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us, for I am persuaded. Say that with me. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know something that's not listed? It doesn't say nor things past. We have an invitation into the light of God's love, but we have a choice to refuse God's love. Right. It is an invitation to walk in the light as He is in the light, and we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. There are people every day that reject the love of God. And if you reject the love of God, it doesn't matter how much God may love you, you cannot receive it because you reject it. How do you receive the love of God? Let us walk in the light as He is in the light. And what that does, it helps me to have fellowship one with another. And then, in that wonderful, beautiful, holy, loving light, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from how much sin? All sin. I think it's very important for us to recognize one of the greatest things we have to re we have to come to grips with is one thing we've got to know: God truly died for me. Lalani, Jesus died for. I just thought it rhymed with me. Uh, he died for you. Amen. And for me to believe that, but it's another thing for for you to believe that. I'm trying to think who else has an I on the end of their name. Becky, Jesus died for you. Right? I can't think of it. Oh, Ronnie. <laughs> Billy. Billy. Brody. There you go. Brody. It's so important for us to have a personal revelation that Jesus died for you. Amen. I mean, look at your neighbor and put your finger in their face and tell them. Jesus died for you. Look at somebody else. Put your finger in their face. And Jesus loves you. And He wants you to have peace. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to experience healing. Peace for the mind. Peace for the heart. Peace for the soul. Peace for your life. Peace in your home. Peace in your relationships. Peace with your children. Peace with your parents. Amen. Everybody say peace. 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 Holiness. Let's pray. Father, we love you today.
Lord, I pray that, Lord, the peace that you have promised us, Lord, help us each individual here tonight and those that may watch this on the film, Lord God, I pray, God, that you would help us to receive the peace that only you can give us, Lord. And, God, the peace that is missing, I pray, God, that you, O oh Lord Jesus, would help us to strive, to reach, to stretch, to forget, to move forward, Lord, to come out of the darkness so that we can come in and live and walk in the light. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Jesus name.